It's time for another Drink Masters review. Episode three, Botanical Bevies. Botanical, Botanical. Botanical, Botan. We gotta stop making fun of the way people from New Jersey say things. Every time we do, Teresa Judice's forehead gets a little bit smaller. You guys seem to love these, so I'm gonna keep doing them. Maybe it's because I actually know what I'm talking about, because in this case, I have over a decade of experience bartending, and I've been on reality TV for almost half a decade. Lohan Beach Club happened over four years ago, and I'm still not over it. <laughs> Be sure to like and subscribe, and click that bell to be notified every time I make a new video. And without further ado, let's get into watching Botanical Bevies, because that sounds like a brunch thing, which makes sense because I'm doing this at the ass crack of dawn. Why does Dawn have an ass crack? Who's fucking Dawn? Is there someone named Dawn who has their ass crack showing at all times? I know Dawn is a time. I know Dawn is a time. Or it's when the sun's coming up. Shouldn't it be when the moon is coming up? So when the sun is going down? Because Dawn, ass crack, moon, is your, your butt, and where, where are we going? What's happening? Let's watch this fucking video. <laughs> It'll bring you one step closer to fulfilling your mixology dreams. Remember, one of you will walk out of this bar with a cash prize of $100,000. Yeah! This some shit. How come they get $100,000 and the only thing I had on the line was being part of the Lohan brand? What does that mean? I'm gonna leave having people make fun of me with a Coke addiction? <laughs> I've already done that on the internet. I'm living the Lohan brand. But it won't exactly be a walk in the park. Actually, that's exactly what it's gonna be. A walk in the park. Cause we about to get botanical. Botanical. But what was I saying? Botanical? Botanical? Everyone shut up. Everyone got on my ass about saying that wrong. You know what I meant. The fucking pronunciation police on YouTube of all places. Suck my dick. Flowers, herbs, fruits. It's nature time. I love botanicals. They add different kinds of depth to a cocktail. Yes. Yeah, botanicals are in most cocktails. <laughs> the most good ones, at least. Botanical cocktails are perfect for spring and summer and even all year round because technically citrus is a botanical. Botanical, botan we're just gonna have to get used to me saying it however the fuck I say it. Thankfully, we've moved past artificial juices and soda from a gun. Speak for yourself. Some of us have not. <laughs> Some of us have it. I can, but that's a lot of work. I gotta slice the lemon myself. Oh my God. It does make a difference though. Am I making a good cocktail or am I making a fast cocktail? Different places call for different things, different strokes for different folks. Are you hiring an escort or are you grabbing someone from the street? Different things. There's no substitute for fresh botanicals. But to use botanicals properly, you really gotta know what you're doing. Not really. I don't think you really, I don't think it's that difficult to understand how to use botanicals in a, in a cocktail. <laughs> I think it's harder to find a cocktail that doesn't have any botanical ingredients. I mean, a good cocktail. <laughs> we'll be joined by cocktail royalty. So please welcome cocktail king, Dale DeGroff. <laughs> Who the fuck is Dale DeGroff? Where was my call? Where was my call? Dale DeGroff is like the cocktail OG. We have one of the pioneers in the industry. None of y'all know who he is. None of y'all know who he is. Don't even. They make, you say, they make you say that. I remember on Lohan, they would have these like celebrity guests come in and we would have to be like, oh my God, oh, I can't believe that. But I don't know who the fuck they are. Never heard of them at once in my life. He also made the Cosmo one of the most popular cocktails on the planet. I'm thrilled to be. So he's gay. So he ha so he's gay. He's got to be. So he's gay. Okay, he can stay. Love you, sis. Hey, girl, what's going on? Hey, sis. Welcome to brunch. Do you want to do a bump in the bathroom? We're sitting with the low hand brand. We want to see cocktails that capture the color, flavor, and complexity of your assigned botanical. Each team must create a jaw dropping botanical bombshell of a drink. Adjectives. <laughs> Make sure you include adjectives so that when we put this on a menu, we could charge double. Meredith and I are assigned hibiscus. Hibiscus is a pretty approachable ingredient. Okay, so first of all, they have pears <laughs> in this challenge, which can be very annoying for a lot of bartenders or mixologists because not only does everybody have their own way of doing things, Sharing a space to make a cocktail could be very, very annoying. For any bartender who's ever had to share a well during a shift, you know what the fuck I mean. Also, hibiscus? I've always said hibiscus. 
Words. Words, and I don't know if it's just because I'm from New Jersey or I'm a fucking idiot. Ashley is my teammate. If you want to maybe, like, grab some tools that you think we might need. That's me as the bartender. If you want to just, like, get the stuff <laughs> while I do everything important, like, just go get the stuff. <laughs> like, just all of a sudden now you're my assistant while I do everything. This is my world. So I want to see their various botanical ingredients all over. So visual references, tactile elements to really accentuate those flavors. I'm really, really excited. This is the future of mixology. Okay, as a judge, I'm going to be judging it that way. I'm gonna be basing it off of whether the botanical element is the star. Because sometimes these judges take things way out of hand and judge things that don't fucking matter. They've contradicted themselves several times in the last two episodes. So let's see if they do it again. Pandan tastes like a grassy herb. What the fuck is pandan? <laughs> what is a pandan? This is like gooseberry all over again. What is a pandan? But a grassy herb, okay. Let's put the grassy herb with some citrus and gin. That, that would be my base. That, that would be where I go. So let's see if they do that. LP and I are together and we get juniper. Juniper can be tricky. If it's too juniper forward, you're walking through a pine forest and nobody wants to be eating a big old tree. Juniper, isn't juniper what makes gin gin? Isn't like, isn't gin basically just like juniper flavored vodka, right? Am I wrong? Am I wrong there? Juniper is the only botanical which is in all gins. Okay, so we're gonna go with gin. I feel like a lot of these cocktails are gonna be gin based cocktails because gin goes very well with botanical flavors because it's a botanical base. These botanicals have to be the heart of your cocktail. That's hard because these botanicals are so strong that if you overuse them, they're gonna be all there is there. So, no, that's not hard. That actually makes it easier because now you need to use less. Because if you use less, it's going to stand out, which saves you time and space in the cocktail. What is hard about this? <laughs> <laughs> Why are we trying to make it seem like it's much more difficult than it is? I'm curious to see how they work with another bartender, you know? How do they mesh their different style? And do they come out with something cohesive? That's the challenge. That is the real challenge here, because like I said, I'm like, get the fuck out of my way. From the get-go, we, we started clashing. Any more liquor nitrogen. Did you manage to freeze some? No. That's me. That's me. Did you manage to do anything? No? Great. So glad I'm with you today. I want to make a twist on a Ramos Gin Fizz, which is a classic cocktail that has cream and egg white. It would be a better canvas to incorporate rose. We put egos aside. Today, there's only one goal, is for us to win. We go with the Ramos. Yeah, I was going to say, that sounded great. I said, whatever the hell he wants to do, what did he want to do, like a Cosmopolitan? A rose Cosmopolitan? The Cosmopolitan flavors are going to overpower the rose. So the creamy based one that he's talking about, the gin fizz, bitch, work. Michael and I both like to use eclectic flavors. However, I have a chaotic approach to making cocktails. I come into it with no plan. Me as a bartender on YouTube versus every other mixologist here. <laughs> what makes Mike MGTV's channel stand out amongst all other drink based YouTube channels? Chaos! I'm making a black currant syrup with fresh fenugreek, rosemary, and a whole lot of orange peel. It's basically a magic potion, but hey, I'm just gonna throw it all in a pan. That sounds like it's really good, but those are a lot of intense flavors mixing together. So it might be hard to get one main ingredient to stand out. That's all I'm thinking. Right now, Meredith is working on a tomato hibiscus tarragon water. We're kind of going on an inspiration of us, of, uh, you know, kind of going to 90s gay bars and the 90s uh, martini. I love it. I stand. I stand. They win. They win. Give it to them. Give them the prize. They said the judge is gay. We're going to make something gay. We have just meshed really well together, and uh, we're both queer, so it's just kind of like double trouble. I, I would call it double trouble. I would call it double trouble. I would serve it in a glass shaped like a douche. <laughs> Put this in your ass. You could drink it that way. Don't. Don't ever drink it in your butt. It could cause a lot of problems. I'm just being funny, but I have to say that. Dale DeGroff is a complete trailblazer. Can I smell that? Yeah. Thank you. Wow. Dale was the person who said, wait, let's focus on fresh ingredients. Should I know who this person is? Am I wrong? Maybe they do know who he is and I don't know because everyone's just like sucking his dick. 
<laughs> and I would love to be there and be like, I don't know who the fuck you are, but you're gonna like my shit. We're doing a play on a rum old fashioned. An old fashioned cocktail is spirit, sugar, some water, and bitters. The cocktail is gonna be a coconut fat washed rum with a little bit of a pandan syrup and some gelato on the side. That sounds amazing. That sounds absolutely amazing. I want that in my mouth. Lloyd's gonna be making our gelato. Yes, yes, yes. Come on, ice cream. I never did the gelato before, so I'm quite nervous. I hope it's gonna work. I'm baking our coconut fat wash rum. I just don't know if their pandan is going to stand out amongst all those other sweet, strong flavors. Especially with the gelato, the gelato is gonna be thick and going to be the star. It might overpower the whole taste. So that's my only concern when I hear the process of making this cocktail. Especially with something like pandan, which is just like an earthy, grassy flavor, I feel like coconut is gonna stand out more than that. So we're throwing a huge curveball, taking Whoa. a little bit of risk, and we're making a non-alcoholic gin. Non-alcoholic cocktails, not only are they trending in the industry, it's a huge resurgence, but they're really important. People are having less problems in the world. That's what that means to me. <laughs> but I love that. I love a non-alcoholic option. A little mocktail, a little mocktail for the, for the menu. I'll take a good mocktail. I'll take a good break for my liver. It needs it. <laughs> it definitely, it definitely needs it. So I appreciate this. We are making a Juniper Ford non-alcoholic spirit with a cucumber soda, and our accompaniment is a boozy ice cream. Oh my God, wait, theirs was juniper. Theirs was juniper, so they're making a non-alcoholic spirit with the juniper, since if they did it otherwise, the juniper would already be in it. That is clever. That's clever, I appreciate this. That's going to the top of my list so far just because it's being intricate. And with the juniper flavor, it's gonna taste like there's gin in the drink. I love it. I love thinking outside the box. We've been tasting juniper throughout this entire process. I'm not even sure I can trust my palate. It's better. I think we should do one more pass on it. I'm not tasting a lot of juniper. Focus on the cocktail with the juniper. Don't focus on the juniper with the gelato because the cream base is going to mask a lot of the flavor, especially botanical flavors. That's why I always shit on creamy ice cream cocktails. That's why people that don't like the flavor of alcohol like those because it masks the flavors so well. So you're doing yourself a disservice by doing that. I'm working on our aromatic and how to incorporate our aromatic into the drink. Oh, it smells good though. That's the pandan and vanilla. These cocktails, the way they're infusing all these different ingredients and matching it with not only liquor-based stuff, but food components as well, and aromatics is so <laughs> insane to me. It's kind of like making me have a sensory overload, but in a good way. Now it's time to taste this shit, my favorite part. The name of the cocktail is Placebo Effect. Your botanical. Our botanical was juniper. We really wanted to kind of place emphasis on this beautiful botanical. We have a cucumber soda with a non-alcoholic juniper-based spirit. That looks absolutely gorgeous. The way they added etching into the lime to make it more beautiful. The ice cream has gin in it. The cocktail does not. Okay, so they still have an alcohol component while bringing in a mocktail option. Loves it. Loves it, I hope it does well. With a liquid, you got the star ingredient and you Thank get you. it right in the nose. But I couldn't find the gin and the edible. Had you even just put a few little droplets of gin on top of it, that really would have done the trick. I'm so upset because it worked the way I wanted it to for the mocktail because you can get gin flavors across by using the juniper since it's the main ingredient in gin. But by combining it with the gelato, I'm always gonna warn people that the thickness of something matters. The flavors need to be very strong to stand out. That's why ice cream flavors are so robust. And that's why you put ice cream in those milkshake cocktails because it masks the complete flavor of alcohol. <laughs> no! This was called Roses for Ramos. Roses for Ramos the DNA and the structure of a classic, incorporating rose buds, rose hips, rose flower water, and rose petals. They used a lot of the rose components in the garnish, but rose is a very, very light flavor. So I'm interested to see if they were able to get that flavor come through 
with all the other ingredients that they used. I thought it was going to be honestly more milkshakey is kind of what I thought heavy. I was watching, yeah. and it's not as heavy as I thought it was going to be. It was delicate. I got the rose, but it wasn't too floral. That's the tough thing with having roses. Really well done on the cocktail. Love, love it. Come through, Rose! Come through, Rose! The fact that they made it not so thick is what made this cocktail work, because if they did, it would have been harder to have that flavor come through. So by making it just like a light, fluffy feel was so fucking smart. This cocktail is called the Dark Horse. What did you have? Licorice root. This is a licorice root cocktail. Oh my God, that looks stunning. <laughs> that looks so stunning. And I love the composition of this cocktail because they didn't use a lot of ice that would water it down and cause the licorice to come through less. Because I was worried that all the other ingredients might be a problem, but licorice is such a strong flavor, I think they're gonna be fine. Being somebody who's not a huge fan of licorice, the drink itself I thought was delicious. I'm not a licorice fan either. It's not something I would go toward, but after having it, I go, man, this is this, this works. Absolutely, that's how you do it. That's how you do it, because you can make the licorice stand out but complemented with other flavors oh, i'm so happy that that worked i think you just got to be a little bit more creative with the presentation of what you were wanting us to consume take those peels dehydrate them put them in a spice grinder and put them on the rim and the come down calm down calm down everybody the drink is fabulous the presentation was fabulous i'm not gonna get tedious with the oranges so the name of our cocktail is blush and bashful remind me of your botanical it's named after my butthole blush and bashful <laughs> It's a vodka gin split base. The hibiscus is used as the citric element in a tomato, strawberry, raspberry water. That looks gorgeous. We also have the hibiscus tea water and hibiscus foam as well. Our biggest fear with using hibiscus was having it extremely tart. So we wanted to layer the cocktail using hibiscus in different formats and elements. It is a stunningly beautiful cocktail. Yes! Oh, I'm so happy for the gaze. The execution, however, it was, to me, too many flavors all ganged up together. And I'm looking for certain things that I saw you making, but I couldn't find. Don't do that to me. Don't do this to me. I was so happy for my people. No! Everything had hibiscus. So I'm gonna be a little bit confused. What went wrong? All the right things were there, you know. Just didn't seem to gel in the end. Meredith, Suzu, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I disagree. And I don't know if I'm just trying to be nice because it's the case, but because everything they said was in that cocktail sounds like it w works to me. It, am I missing something? What's the name of your cocktail? Pandan, Pandan, Pandan. <laughs> Work. Pandan, 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 yes. Pandan infused coconut oil washed white rum with a honey pandan tea syrup with a little bit of toasted sesame in there. And then Lloyd complimented that with his gelada. That presentation, <laughs> that presentation is so stunning. I love doing these because I'm just like enjoying watching them. Normally when I make these kinds of videos, I'm screaming at the top of my lungs to the point where a vein is popping in my neck. But this, I'm just like appreciative. Like I think this is amazing. I just hope that the pandan was able to stand out in the cocktail because I was worried about the other complimenting flavors being too strong. So let's see how this turned out. I loved the cocktail. I love the mystical forest <laughs> feeling of this whole presentation. The gelato is delicious. Yeah, the pandan is like absolutely the star. That's what awesome. I wanted. Thank God. Thank God for a drink called Pandan, Pandan, Pandan. One team in particular showed us that they got a hell of a green thumb. Capri and Lloyd, your cocktail is top shelf. Woo -hoo! We came from the bottom. Now we're at the top. I am so happy. I mean, that presentation was just absolutely stunning. And I'm just happy that they were able to make that flavor stand out. That was the only thing I was worried about, but they really came through. And now I want that drink so bad. LP and Kate, Ashleen and Michael, your botanical cocktails were delicious. Great job. You were all safe. Have a seat. Oh no, oh no, not my gaze. Not my gaze! Not the gaze! Oh my God, it's homophobic. And now to demonstrate the cocktail you'll be making, his classic Cosmo is the king of the cocktail, the godfather of freshness, <laughs> Del DeGraw. They're gonna have a Cosmo off. This is set up. The gays are gonna have a Cosmo off. 
Shut the fuck up. I'm gonna make you a cosmopolitan the way we did it at the Rainbow Room. <gasps> oh my god, he worked at the Rainbow Room! I love that place! <laughs> the way you make a cosmopolitan, you have vodka, lime, triple sec, and cranberry. Cold drink, cold glass, we all know that. 30 count. 30. If it's red, it's wrong. If see-through, it's wrong. Absolutely, whenever you get a co shush, 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 shush. If you get a Cosmopolitan and it's too red, that means that there was too much cranberry. If you get a Cosmopolitan and it's so light that it's see-through, that means that there probably wasn't enough cranberry or too much citrus. To save yourself from elimination, you must give us your own unique take on the Cosmo. I'd make a different color Cosmo. I'd make a different color Cosmo. Instead of cranberry, I would use like a different uh, tart fruit spirit. Maybe like a pineapple. I think a pineapple, like a pineapple version of a Cosmo. That would be delicious. We want you to tap into flavors that represent you in some way. Pineapple! I don't know, some with cum flavors, right? I think that would fit me. <laughs> Is that a good or a bad thing? In Japan, we look at mandarins, strawberries, and cranberries as winter fruits. So I kind of wanted to go for kind of like a Japanese winter. I don't know if that's going to be different enough in order to stand out. Because it sounds very similar. You're not like taking away any ingredients. You're using all the main ingredients, just adding in like one or two other flavors. I am going to try broiling these lemons a little bit and kind of doing like a spiced and broiled lemon juice. The cocktail is called Christmas Cosmo for Ava. That sounds a little bit more different than what he's doing. Like she's taking more of a risk and I think it's gonna pay off for her. The hue is very close to what Dale had expected from the Cosmo. I hope I can impress Dilda. He's already pouring his, I think, honestly, actually now I might be contradicting myself. I think going that outside of the box from what she's doing might be hurting her on time. I don't know what's gonna happen. I don't know what's gonna happen. I'm getting very excited over these drinks. <laughs> Come on. Oh, I hate when that shit gets stuck. I hate when that shit gets stuck. All the craziness, I completely forgot to chill my glasses. I'm not doing what Dale had showed up. No, oh my God, she didn't chill her glasses and she's using a hot ingredient. No, no. And then I poured into the glass and pieces of basil are going into the glass. Come on. Oh my God. No! Oh my god, I feel, I feel for her. I feel for her. The plan was there. She just doesn't have enough time to execute it. This is where mixologists are gonna struggle, being able to make something really fucking fast. Appearance and intricacy is all great, but sometimes you have to be able to work under pressure in a timely manner. This is where club bartenders like myself would shine. I've had to make amazing cocktails in 2.5 seconds for an entire gay bar, and gays are the most critical people in the entire world. They should know this. I'm feeling so nervous about bringing my Cosmos to the judges. I'm absolutely terrified that I'm gonna be going home. I'm disappointed in myself. My cocktail looks like an absolute mess. Oh no. Oh God, I think he has it in the bag. Just from appearance and safety, I think she's going home. No! I would have been upset if either of them went home. This is like this is homophobic. To be a queer person and go home on a Cosmo challenge, Oh my God, I don't know what I would do. So this is a split base of gin and vodka. In Japan, we look at cranberries as well as strawberries as a winter fruit. There is also a little bit of your pimento bitters, some Cointreau and lime. Oh my God, it looks stunning. <laughs> Oh my God, it looks stunning. I wasn't on his side in the beginning, but damn. I thought holidays as soon as cranberries came into my mind. So I tried to use some basil and then trying to- The glass isn't even full enough. Oh no. <laughs> this is my first time having a Cosmo. So I taste different things that I that I like and I'm not sure if I'm supposed to like- Straight people. A full, a straight man as a judge and the, I wouldn't, the day a straight man judges my Cosmo. Balance is off. It's a beautiful drink. A little tart. I tend to like a tartar cocktail, so I didn't find it quite as out of balance. Meredith. Are we judging it based on the normal one or were we supposed to take a different approach? This ain't your cocktail, sir. That's not what the challenge was. Visually, this is a disaster. <laughs> The juice is not strained, so there's a lot of pulp flying around in there, and it's just, you know, the garnish was kind of tossed right in. But your balance is pretty right on. The flavor is good. Yeah, the presentation, we gotta work on so that. So what are we doing? So, so what, 
So what are we doing? In making our decision, we had to take into account who we think will continue to grow and adapt. With that in mind, the mixologist leaving us is Meredith. It's okay. Meredith, I'm sorry, but that means that you will not be the ultimate drink master. Take a few moments to say your goodbyes. Holy shit! <laughs> So what matters more? What did we, what, okay, so, 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 <laughs> because they said her cocktail was better, but his looked better. And that's why this is a mixology challenge, because the one that looked better won. I don't understand. I don't understand. I don't know what happened. I don't know where I'm going. What do you guys think? What do you think is more important? The way a cocktail looks or how it tastes? Which one would have you picked to win in this situation? Let me know in the comments below. My ass has never been more clenched in a gay themed cocktail challenge. That was insane. Special thank you to everybody over on Patreon for helping making this channel possible, especially the regulars and barflies. Over there you get ad free content, content I can't post anywhere else, and other stuff like workout videos workout content, fun stuff like that. And special shout out to this person over on Twitter. If you would like a special shout out in one of my videos, be sure to retweet them when they come out. If that's all, I need a fucking drink. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. My name is Mike MGTV and you are fucking welcome. <laughs>